bristles are like all over the place. <laughs> this cheap brush, this cheap, cheap, cheap brush. Uh, songs this year. This year, I dropped the Andrew Tim song. I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. A car. Doesn't sound very loud, so I'll let it slide. Good place. If you want to check out the songs, uh, link in the description, I'd really appreciate it. I'm really, 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 really appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Let me know what you think too. Uh, so I'm gonna recommend this song. Check out Dog Bone. Dog Bone. So just search whatever platform you use. Jesse Nashe Dog Bone. So J E S S E N A S H E. That's one word. J E S S E N A S H E. And then the song name is Dog Bone. You can do that here on YouTube as well. You can search that on YouTube. Dog Bone. I like that song. One of many that I released this year. One of 310 that I've released this year. Go check that out. Then let me know what you think. Really, really appreciate that. I should start doing that. I should start recommending specific songs. Today's topic is going to be a bit risque, a bit dicey, but you know, we only deal in truths on this channel. It's not actually, it's not actually not that deep, if, you have, if people stop and think for a minute, it's actually not that deep, but anyway, so I, I've actually seen a bunch of videos uh, of, of young women you know, complaining about having to work 9 to 5s like crying in tears just venting in frustration of having to work 9 to 5s oh my god It's always like, why do we have to work to eat and work? To, why do we have to pay to to live, basically? Which, you know, it's a strange argument. That's that's been humanity since the dawn of time. You know, we've, we've from hunter gatherers to now. Like, it doesn't matter. You have to hunt your own food. You have to build your own shelters. Someone has to do it. So you basically, you. You can't be expecting of someone to provide these things for you with their own effort and you're not putting in any effort yourself. People get told that you have a right to health care, you have a right to shelter, you have a right to these things. I don't know. I think these... you Some things like... The very basic things you need to live i guess we can be compassionate towards each other but no one's obligated to do these things for you you know people have their own lives to attend to life is hard enough as it is worrying about yourself then you have other people coming on saying worry about me worry about me there are those amongst us who are you know like disabled less privileged so on and so forth that might need assistance but generally speaking for the majority of us, we can work, we can provide for ourselves, and we should. These are not rights. A lot of these things are privileges. 
going to school was not a right. It's a privilege. It's only very recently we've, we've called these things rights. It's the UN that comes up with this UN charter talking about there's a right, there's a right, there's a right. It's not a right, it's a privilege. A lot of these things are privileges. And if you want them, you have to work for them. Earn your keep. Hunt your own food. Imagine, think about it, guys. Imagine I go out in a fishing boat and I catch a bunch of fish. I do all that myself. It's my own effort. Then you find me and you're like, give me fish, I'm hungry. No. Now you can take it from me, you can steal it, but you know. <laughs> we all know. If anyone is morals, you know what's wrong with that picture. You should be able to work for yourself and do what you need to do to provide for yourself, provide for your family. We provide the infrastructure as a society, and you work. You earn your keep. These, these, these people, them, people my age, a bit younger. They're like, why should we work? Like, why doesn't the government give us things? See? And also, a very dangerous thing you're asking for, because the moment you become dependent on the government for everything, you're a fool if you think they won't take advantage of you. The, the, these things aren't free. <laughs> you think it comes with no strings attached? When the government is like literally like your daddy, like they give you everything, don't think for a second they're not, they're not gonna take advantage of you. Because you're completely at their mercy at that point. Not wise, not wise. Provide for yourself. I want to homeschool my kids. I don't want to go around the government to teach my kids. I don't want to rely on the government to feed me. I don't want to rely on the government to house me. None of that. Because all that shit comes with strings attached. And as a society, we shouldn't be like, Big Daddy government, please take care of me. It's like, you, no. I have response. But this is how you get tyrants, guys. This is how tyrants emerge, because you give the government more and more and more and more power until eventually they have all the power. And then when they start shutting everything down and telling you what to do, you have no power to oppose them. They've indoctrinated your children in the schools. They've taken all your weapons. They've taken everything from you. They're in control of your money. They're in control of your housing. Everything you have is theirs. You think they won't tell you what to do? Of course they will. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's a quote from someone. I forget who was Made that quote. Anyway. So work is uh, a must. You must work. You must earn your keep. And it's a privilege to be able to work as well. Like, you need something to do. Idle hands do the devil's work. When you have nothing good to do with your time, you end up doing bad things. You end up getting to an up to no good. And the society becomes very decadent because uh, this guy talked about how during the holiday seasons, especially like New Year's, he'd notice an influx in DUIs, accidents, a lot of bad things happening around the holiday season. So what he said to his workers is, New Year's Eve is coming up. On the morning of New Year's, we're having a meeting at work at 8 a.m. You better be there or else. What that does is, it uh, reduces the amount of time these people have to indulge in festivities because they know they have to be in work in the next morning. So they know I can't party too late because I have a meeting in the morning so I have to cut this short and go home and sleep and wake up and go to work and what did he what did that employer see he saw his the, the DUI saw his employees go down drastically significantly because when you have shit to do you you're less likely to misbehave you don't engage in misconduct as much so a society that doesn't work 
best believe you're going to see all sorts of debauchery. All sorts of depravity. People don't have things to keep them busy. It's just how we are as human beings. Idle hands do the devil's work. Anyway, so with the, with the young ladies, it really puzzles me when women in particular complain about working because this is what feminism fought for. It fought for, <laughs> it fought for women working. Um, you know, there the, are these things called happiness indexes. They measure a country's happiness. We've had them for decades now. Multiple countries have them. And, you know, they do surveys and they they get a general idea of how happy people are. You compare the happiness index of now to indexes of now to the happiness indexes of a few decades ago. Women were happier back then than they are now. Even with all your rights and privileges, you're miserable now. Women back then were happier. Why was that? Well, their lives were easier. They had less pressure. It wasn't perfect. Now, obviously, we know that there were certain things in the past that were not perfect. Um, but uh, generally speaking, women are happier. So, you know, we, I think we tend to mischaracterize the past a lot. We, 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 we remix history and we don't give an accurate account of what history is actually like. Because if you let a lot of these progressive types tell the story, the part, the entirety of the past is miserable. The women were just being smacked around, being beaten back and forth. That was just the, the the general common experience of every woman. Not true. It's not. Men men aren't like demons, as much as a lot of feminists like to say that, which is sexist. I know that they. I know like some people like to think, oh, it's impossible to be sexist towards men in the same way like black people say it's impossible for black people to be racist towards white people and stuff like that, which is disingenuous and it's just a lie. And you can use whatever uh, pseudo intellectual acrobatics you want to, to twist that point and say, no, it's impossible for women to be sexist towards men. There are plenty of women who sexually abuse men because they think men are worthless and, and uh, verbally assault men and do all sorts of things to men discriminate against men because they, they genuinely in their heart of hearts believe like they're lower creatures if that isn't sexism I don't know what to tell you but anyway the point I'm trying to make is there were plenty of good men in decades prior who treated their wives well and loved their wives the past was not perfect. We've come a long way, but uh, I think the mistake the feminists made is uh, saying all the women go work now, even though women didn't want to work. What they wanted was to be treated better. That's what they actually wanted, majority of them. It was a very select few who decided that the way forward is all women go into the workplace because we're exactly the same as men and we can do everything men can do and there's no difference between men and women. That's what a minor minority said and the rest kind of went along with it. Because, you know, peer pressure and all these sorts of things, social contagion. And women are not happy now. A lot of them are stressed and unhappy. They're tired. You're going to these nine to five jobs and it's, 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 it's a lot. It used to be the man that had to do that. And, you know, men are different. We take pride in sacrificing in that way for our family. We take pride in being providers, going out, working hard, and paying bills. It gives us a sense of pride. It's not about the job. You can hate the job. You know, some people are fortunate to love the work that they do. But, you know, for a lot of men, it's not about the job itself. You know, if you're working in a coal mine, I doubt you're passionate about mining coal inhaling all the, the dust that causes lung cancer. If you're working on an oil rig and the dangers that come with that. If you're working at some construction site and the dangers that come with that. All these dangerous jobs feel like a taxi driver working the graveyard shift constantly. You're doing all these things. If you're in the military, whatever your job is, 
some of these things, you know, like, like you'd rather be doing something else if you could. But it's not about the job, it's about the fact that you're providing for your family and you get to be around other men that are providing for their families and you get to share your stories and it fills you with a sense of masculine pride and it keeps you going through thick and thin. It's not always fun, it's not always <laughs> exciting, but you know, we're men and we're different. A lot of women don't, just aren't built for that. They, they can do it if they have to. But the response isn't the same. I think it, it takes more of a mental toll on women. And it changes them. It makes them more masculine, more abrasive, and stresses them the fuck out. Because it's just not natural. That's not to say they can't do it. They'll do it if they have to. The point of women that take on hardship to provide for their families you know that they can do it but should they be doing it is the question and would they be better off in some other circumstance I think the answer to that question is obvious when you see the sheer amount of women that you know we, we track this with statistics and we, we hold these surveys women are unhappy now and my question to whatever whoever's watching this if you're a woman like, like for real, like you, I, I know a, a man says these things, you get angry and you start saying all sorts of things and <laughs> accusing you of all sorts of things. Why, why subject yourself to this lifestyle? Honestly, who are you doing this for? Is this for yourself or is this, are you just going on with a, with a social narrative? Would you not be happier if a good man, a genuinely good man who cares about you, who loves you, says, I will take care of you. I'll give you a roof over your head. Um, I'll, you know, we'll be married and you don't have to worry about working some nine to five. I'll take care. Wouldn't you want that? Obviously, it's quid pro quo. So you, you take his last name, you marry him, you let him lead, you let him be the head of the household and you actually allow that. But then in exchange, you get to be taken care of, you know, you have a family, you have children, and you just get to take care of the home, get take care of the children. You're going to have free time on your hands so you can dedicate your free time to your hobbies, whatever your hobbies might be. You know, if you're in a community of other moms, you can have them as friends and you meet up with them. It doesn't, whatever you want to do, you can do that. And you take care of the home. You don't have to worry about the corporate world or whatever world, nine to five world. You let your husband worry about that. Does that not sound preferable to clocking in, getting yelled at, deadlines, stress, not liking what you do, clocking out, getting home to a husband who's also stressed. You're arguing because <laughs> you're both stressed. There's no one in the house that's not stressed. And then you have to do that again the next day. Like, come on guys. Because couples in general these days are just, there's no balance. Because it used to be that the woman would be the piece of the man's life. Like, well, yeah, I, I think when feminism crept in, women became more combative. And yeah, but feminism doesn't make women happier. I, I, I don't know if that's a stated goal of feminism. I don't think that's the goal to make women happy. I, I think it's just to make women men. Like, to prove that we're, we're, we can do everything men can. You can't. But, you know, I think that's the goal. I don't think the goal is to make women happier because if, if that's the goal, it's failed dismally. Women are not happier now. They're just not. People in general are not happier, but women in particular. The mental health crisis amongst females is, uh, yeah. I don't, you know, men kill themselves more often these days. That's, that's a fact. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's several reasons for that. <laughs> in particular, men not having purpose because, you know, Get, getting booted out of the workplace. Women dominate the universities now. Um, men don't have purpose. Losing purpose. But anyway, women are not happy. Compared to dec decades prior. Um, so 
I don't know what feminism's goal was in that regard. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is. It used to be that before feminism, women would be the light of the household. You, you're your man, you've come home from this stressful work environment, whatever you're doing, especially back in the day, that life was a lot harder. You come home and there's this delightful woman, this feminine woman. That's another thing, women are feminine. Now they're a lot more masculine now and how they present themselves and how they behave. Um, You'd come home to a very feminine woman and it would bring that peace into your life, that light, that joy. Now it's like both of you are stressed. Both of you are on edge. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Some people make it work. Some people are mature enough to make it work and they they do what they can. But I'm just saying like, it's not optimal, guys. The traditional structure worked. And I think a lot of more women will be so much happier now. And again, the puzzle isn't perfect. So we, we can address like things like treat your woman with respect, be kind. You know, she's a human being, of course. Like as a husband, as the head of the household, your job, your job is to serve, 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 serve. Make sure that your family is doing well, that people are happy and at peace and you're not disrupting things your home is your sanctuary it's your sanctuary take care of your sanctuary as a husband make sure that your sanctuary is a place of peace of love laughter you know like you're a strong family unit you're not stepping on each other's toes you're not getting each other's way you're supporting each other you're making each other as happy as you can so you can address that and I'm all for that, but yeah, I think what the feminist fucked up is saying, every woman, go to work, let's work like the men do. Oh, big mistake. That's not to say every woman shouldn't work. There are, what, there are women who have objectives, they have missions. Whether you want to write a book, you want to be a doctor, you want to be some sort of scientist of some sort. There, there, there are lots of things women want to do do that but uh, based on conversations I've had and based on the trends I'm seeing that's not most women most women would um, I think you'd be happy if you just allowed a man to take care of you and then you you, you you can have your hobbies whatever your hobbies are but you know you fulfill the traditional role of mother um, what was the word homemaker and then you can have plenty of things you can do out in, in your free time that fulfill you in that way but uh, you're not like a career woman you know I think you'd find that you'd actually enjoy that life a lot this shouldn't be controversial it really shouldn't um, there's always someone that has something to say but think about what I'm saying like really think about what I'm saying right now and, and ask yourself, like, do I really want to slave away in some company, in some job? Or do I, do I want to move at my own pace and be taken care of and have time and space to be happy at, at peace? To take care of my children, to invest in my hobbies, to to make my husband happy, to to do this, to do that. Like it, it's such a more freeing environment to to exist in. Not being and evidenced by the fact that women were more likely to, to claim happiness despite the flaws of previous eras, to report happiness despite the flaws of previous eras than they are now. You have all this freedom, all these privileges, and yet you're unhappy. Why? So yeah, think about that. I wonder what the response is going to be to this, but uh, yeah. Dealing truths, not in spoofs. 
let me pray and get out of here before I say something else uh, incendiary. Dear God, thank you for this individual watching this right now. Thank you for making them whole and unique and guiding them with all tools, peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you that you've blessed this individual with wonderful people that love them and take care of them and just bring the best out of them. Just make them the best person they can possibly be. And thank you for um, introducing, maintaining the ones there that are there as well. So uh, oh, thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for the things they value in life, all the great things they have. Just help them take stock of all the great things they have and just be aware of those great things so that through giving thanks they can find peace and contentment and attract even more blessings. Good health, long life, and happiness for this individual. In my name I pray, Jesus, name I pray. Amen.